So does God exist? Let's ask Immanuel Kant. Immanuel Kant was a philosopher who lived mostly in the 18th century, and he is really important for philosophy for a bunch of reasons. But one of the ones that we're concerned about is how does he deal with this question, does God exist? And we're going to see that he's going to, like a good philosopher, he's going to say, well, what do you mean by exist? And how would you even know whether anything exists? Because Kant's going to do a couple things that's important for us. He takes empiricism, remember that is saying that you know things by your senses, and he takes a little bit of rationalism, or a lot of rationalism, which is, remember, that's where you say, I know things not because I sense them, but just because I know intuitively what they are. So Kant takes those two different things, rationalism, empiricism, and brings them together in a whole new way of thinking. And and his his idea has basically become known as the Copernican revolution in philosophy. Just as Copernicus took everything and just sort of mixes it up and says, wow, this is crazy because it's not the sun going around us, but we go around the sun. Just a completely different way of thinking about the world. That's what Kant does. Okay, so does God exist? Here's a couple things that he's going to do. He's going to say, first of all, well, how would you even know if anything exists? And he's going to tell you that in, in reality, you can never really know anything in and of itself. Take, for example, let's say you're, you're out, you're hiking, and you take a picture of a tree with your digital camera and because you think the tree looks cool. And then you come home and you realize that that tree is on a little, uh, little card on your camera. And if you were able to look at that card and read the information on it, you would see just a bunch of ones and zeros because essentially your camera is a little computer and computers, th their language is ones and zeros. And so everything it knows essentially becomes ones and zeros. And so if your camera were to talk to you, this is a weird scenario, your camera would show you the file with a tree on it and it would be a bunch of ones and zeros lined up in a specific way and he would say isn't this a cool tree and you would tell the camera no no no, that's that's not what a tree looks like because a tree isn't just ones and zeros a tree has color and depth and all that sort of thing and you would know that the camera does not see the tree as it really is. Okay, now what Kant would do to you at that point is he would say, first of all, why are you talking to a camera? That's really weird. And then he would say, well, how do you know that your understanding of a tree is any better than the camera's, right? I mean, it could be that there is a being out there who actually sees the tree differently than you do. Like a squirrel sees a tree differently than you do. It experiences it in a different way, right? But it could be that just as the cameras, ones and zeros aren't really the way it is. It's probably the same case that the way your eyes work it tells you something, but it's not really the way reality is. Now, this is hard for us to wrap our minds around, but remember, he's a philosopher and that's what philosophers do. And so he's saying, whatever reality is, you cannot be sure that that's what it is really like, like how it looks to you. That's probably not what it's really like. Okay. So first of all, he does that. And then he says, and in fact, all of reality consists of two different types of things. One is phenomenal and the other is noumenal. Now, phenomenal and noumenal are real things. They really do exist, but phenomenal are things that you can see, or you can experience, you can touch, all that sort of stuff. Whereas noumenal are real things that you cannot experience. Okay, one of the ways to think of this is like waves. Okay, a sound wave is phenomenal because it's a wave, but a sound wave would hit your ear in a certain way that you could actually interpret it as a sound. A light wave would hit your eyes in a certain way that you would interpret that as, okay, this is a light wave. Now, there are other kinds of waves like a radio wave. Now, it is as real as a sound wave or a light wave, but you as a person cannot interpret that radio wave. A radio could interpret it and it could take that radio wave and interpret it in some sort of way. And so we have designed radios to uh, take that sound and interpret it as a, you know, as music or something. And so for us, a 
radio wave would be noumenal. It is real. We just cannot experience it with the senses that we have. Okay, so what does Kant do? Remember, we're trying to figure out, does God exist? Now, here's where Kant goes with it. Remember, he says you cannot experience reality as it really is. Like, we have a convoluted interpretation of whatever reality is. And so, if that's the case, even if there is a God, you do not experience him as he really is. And so, you, we cannot even say anything really significant about God because we cannot experience him as he really is, just as we would not trust a camera's ones and zeros to describe a tree. We cannot expect whatever is inside of us to explain fully whatever anything is, let alone God, right? And remember phenomenal numeral, that, that distinction too, okay? Now, a phenomenon, a phenomenal thing is something that you is real and you can experience. Now, since we cannot experience God, we cannot see God, we cannot taste God, we cannot touch God, we cannot hear God, we believe that he doesn't communicate that way to us, then he would say, Kant would say, well, God is not phenomenal, he would be, what? Noumenal. So, notice what's happening. He's not saying that God does not exist. He's just saying that whatever God is, he could be as real as a rock or a tree or something like that. But since he is noumenal, kind of like a radio wave, he is real, but we cannot experience him or talk about him. So it's kind of saying something about God would be trying to say, well, what color is a radio wave? Well, it's not any color. What does a radio wave smell like? Well, it doesn't have a smell to it. And so he would say, saying anything about God is as ridiculous as trying to describe the smell of a radio wave. So does God exist? Well, who knows? If he does, we can't really know him as he is. And if he does exist, he is numinal, saying, yeah, sure, he's real, but you just can't say anything about him. Really interesting move in this question of God, does God exist?